Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio Network to educate, to enlighten, to entertain. On today's podcast, hosted by me, Lillian Caldwell, lest we forget historical, we're going to be talking about the TSA at the airports and if you're on prescription medication. Not a biggie? Oh, yeah, it is a biggie. Just as important if you're going overseas or traveling within the United States. The Buzz, B U Z Z, capital R, small x, shows that one in nine travelers have had to cancel their trip after having their medication confiscated by the TSA at the airport. And one in six were able to replace their meds, but they had to pay full price for them. So what is that telling you? Well, one suggestion is to carry a list of your medications with you in your wallet or in your handbag, carry on. So if your prescription medications are removed, you can ask a pharmacist to go and refill them after explaining the problem. More than 50% of these people surveyed in the Buzz RX said having their medicine increased their stress and anxiety around a trip. And 18% said it forced them to cancel some trip activities. That's pretty bad, folks. What, are we being discriminated now because we're on medication? What's next? Anxiety medication was the most common type to be confiscated, followed by sleep aids and over-the-counter remedies, which means that if you take a lot of vitamins, chances are they will also be removed from your possession. Rodriguez said travelers should reach... which means that when you get over to jolly old England and you don't have your medication for your heart, you will need to go to a consulate and have the American consulate and have something done about it immediately. What do they suggest? It's always a good idea for passengers to keep medicine in their carry-on bag, which I do in my pocketbook. But that doesn't guarantee that they get to their final destination with their medication. According to a January survey of 1,245 Americans from Buzz RX, a prescription discounting service, one in 10 Americans have had their medicine confiscated while traveling, either by the Transportation Security Administration or by border officials abroad which means that you can get it confiscated when you leave the United States to go into Canada. Something for you to think about. Before traveling, Ricardo Rodriguez, a member of Buzz Rux's data team, told USA Today, it's imperative to research the destination, especially if traveling internationally, about what their medication requirements are. Why? because maybe some of the popular prescriptions that you get here at the States freely are forbidden or against the law to use in that particular country. Rogers explained, as I said already, that some U.S. medications are not approved in other countries, which can make traveling with them complicated. Discuss the issue with your provider would probably be the best thing to do. So data from Buzz RX shows that one in nine travelers had to cancel their trip after having their medication confiscated at the airport. And one in six have been able to replace their meds. So something that you need to consider. Other things to consider. Why is it all of a sudden the TSA is confiscating your prescription drugs? 
they have the rule. It's called the TSA 3-1-1 rule. And you'll be required to remove the bag from your carry-on unless you have a TSA pre-check. So they highly recommend it. So when if you're taking either a domestic or an international flight, look up and find out how you get a T check. Else and aerosols. They also don't require you to put your medically necessary liquids into a liquid bag. However, they do have some limitations on the liquid medication. They require you to only bring, quote, a reasonable quantity, unquote, and state that the liquor rule exemption only allows certain items to be carried on the airline when the item is declared and it is, one, required during your flight and or at your travel destination, two, not available at the airport in the sterile area, that's after the scanning checkpoint, and three, not available at your travel destination. What are considered responsible quantities for the trip? When you bring liquid medications through the security, the TSA 3-1-1 rule does not apply. Instead, TSA will allow you to bring in reasonable quantities. This is a subjective definition, so there's going to be room for agent discretion. Yeah, they want to win on both sides. Try not to go too far with your liquid medications if you think that you might be bringing in an unreasonable amount. It's a good idea to have a clear stated purpose why you need the liquid medication. And it might even be a better idea if you have a signed doctor's note explaining why you need that much medication. Sort of like getting a note from your teacher so you can go to the bathroom when you're sitting there or standing squirming with your legs crossed is a good red flag for them to understand you really, really need to go to the boy room or the girl's room. It would also help your cause if you explain your dosage requirements in relation to the quantity of medication you're bringing. For example, if you require 10 grams of medication per day and you're bringing 100 grams with you on a 10-day trip, that makes sense. But if you require 10 grams of the medication per day and you're bringing 3,000 grams with you for a weekend trip, that would be a different story. At some point, the TSA will clarify this rule when they stated that the medication needs to not be available at the airport in the sterile area and are not available at your travel destination. Most people don't really like this rule because essentially just bottle of NyQuil just because it will be available at an outrageous price within the airport. And sometimes it's difficult to know whether or not something will be available at your destination. So it's just smart thinking to bring it with you. However, those are the laws. Now, the TSA also states that you should notify the TSA agent about your liquid medication before you go through security screening. And the author of the article says, I have flown with liquid medication many times before and have never notified TSA about it, nor have they given me any pushback. There's a prescription on the medication bottle, and that may be it. The TSA does notice your liquids or you tell them about them. The medically required liquids will be subjected to additional screening that include being asked to open the container. They might pour the substance to another container, test it out on a small sample of the medication, or swab it for explosives. So just be pay, prepared, as the Boy Scouts would say, if you're asked to do that. 
You will not have to put your liquid medications into a Ziploc bag. Stuff for you to know about the ruling. I never knew about it. So it's something you should keep in mind. Next week, we'll go into how to pack your medication for a flight on a carry-on or on a check bag. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Unless we forget, it's Coracle talking about TSA agents and the removal of prescription drugs. And hope you can join us next week for the continuation. You can see this all over again on youtube.com forward slash PWR Network, PW Talk Radio, on facebook.com forward slash Mastering Your Communication Skills, facebook.com forward slash Mastering Your Communication Skills. You can also find it on facebook.com, lest we forget. You can also find it on https colon forward slash forward slash Passional World Talk Radio Network and all the LinkedIn, YouTube, Tumblr, X, social media platforms that are available for you to go and listen. Thank you very much for joining us today. And remember, have a great weekend. Thank you.